Several years ago, I had been driving and I was thinking about the Middle East. I had uh, actually been listening to the news, which I hardly ever do. Anyway, I was listening about some of the problems that were happening there and I just felt so much compassion. And so I started to um, want to envision what I wanted and I heard a voice in my head that said, instead of calling it the Middle East, call it the Middle Ease. So I started to envision and in my vision, you know, everybody was um, smiling. P kids were playing in the street. People were laughing. P there was abundance of food. There were lo all the buildings looked healthy and you know um, beautiful and capable buildings. And there were lots of trees. And there were tourists that were friendly with everybody. And everybody was friendly with the tourists. And there were people from other cultures. And everybody was friendly with the other cultures. And and it was just this beautiful this beautiful thing. So I walk into, uh, I was driving to the grocery store and I walk into the grocery store and this woman says to me, oh, you look like you're glowing, what's going on? And I said, oh, I just had this vision and I explained the vision to her, I told her the whole vision and she said, oh my God, I'm from Iran and I will have this vision too. And I said, oh, that's beautiful and we hugged. Then I went into the vegetable section and this girl there, I know everybody at the grocery store who works there, right? So she says to me, oh my God, you're glowing. What's going on? I said, I'm having this vision and I shared about the Middle ease and all the kindness and the connection and the bonding and the love and the harmony and the beauty. And, and, and she says, oh, that's so beautiful. I'm going to imagine that. And I said, oh, thank you. So then we hugged. Then I went into the dairy section. I don't eat dairy anymore, but at this time I did. And there's a woman there and she was crying. And I said, are you all right? And she said, my husband is so sick. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry, would you like a hug? And so I gave her a hug and we just talked for a few minutes about her husband. And then she said, you're glowing. And I said, well, I have this vision and I, may I share it? And she said, oh, please. And I shared it and she said, oh, that is so beautiful. I love that so much. I'm gonna envision that too. And so she, um, she started to envision that. And I said to her, I'm going to envision your husband being healthy the way you want him to be and having what he wants as well. And so we, were, we hugged again. <laughs> and then I went around to the other section of the store and there was a guy standing there and he, he was a, an American guy. And I, he said, looks at me and he goes, wow, you're glowing. This was like the theme in the, in the store. <laughs> wow, you're glowing. And I said, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm having this beautiful vision. Can I share it with you? And he said, of course. So I share about the Middle East and I share the whole thing. And he's listening and he's just like, that is so beautiful. He said, I just got off the plane from Hong Kong. I've been living there for the last several years. And I just, you're the first person I've talked to today. And he goes, I'm so glad I talked to you. And he said, can I give you a hug? And I said, sure. So we started hugging and then we became friends. And then we went out to lunch and... And then, I, oh, by, when, I, when I was at the grocery store, I said, oh, you know a friend of mine? Um, I have a friend, one of my best friends lives in Hong Kong. And he goes, what's your friend's name? And I said, Michael Wong. And he goes, Michael Wong, the singer? And I said, yeah. He goes, he's my friend too. I said, he is? So we had that bond. So then we went out to lunch and we had a really nice time. And he was just really sweet. He has, his uh, fiance was still in Hong Kong. She was getting her paper. She was uh, Chinese, so she was, or Hong Kongese. Um, but she was getting her stuff to move, to be with him, to move to America. And she was an amazing cellist. He played me some of her music. It was incredible. But so then, he, then okay, so that, that whole, that was, you know, one period of time. That was over a couple months where I was in the grocery store that one day and then where he and I had, been, had become friends. And then um, I, moved, I moved further away, so I didn't run into him or see him very much anymore and his his fiance came they got married and all that stuff so he wasn't as available so I didn't worry about it but I still I still appreciated him then this man asks me if I'll be an MC in his peace song awards now I had never been an MC before um, and and not for a music award show it was a it was a music show a music award show about people that are making music that elicits peace in the world, especially in the Middle East. And so I said to him, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. I love the idea. I've just never done it before. Can you give me till tomorrow and I'll let you know. So I was supposed to go meet somebody now in a different part of town, not where I was living before. In a different part of town, I was supposed to go meet somebody for breakfast. And as I'm on the way there, there is the guy that had moved from Hong Kong, who I was the first person he talked to, who knows my best friend in Hong Kong. 
And I look at him and I'm like, oh my God. And he goes, oh my God, it's so good to see you. And he came out and gave me a hug. And then um, he goes, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to meet somebody. I said, but I'm thinking that I, I'm, I, because I see you and because you know about my dream about the Middle East, I'm going to say yes to this man that's invited me to be a music, um, to, to invite me to be the, the MC for this Peace Song Awards. And he said, oh, my God, that's so great. And I said, I know. I just feel really blessed. I think you're my sign that I should do it. And so then I met my friend. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to go look for a gown. Cause he had said, and I called him and said I was going to do it. He said, great, do you have a gown? And I have lots of gowns, but I thought maybe it'd be, I'd find another gown. So I went to go to the store to find a gown. That girl remembered me from, like, 20 years ago, which was really sweet. So we had a nice talk. And then I, um, I didn't find a gown there that I liked. And then I was in, I was inspired to go to this other event um, the next week. And at that event, somebody um, is giving away. It's an it's a clothing event where people would go to this one woman who knows your colors, and she knows what will work for this person's body, this person's facial structure, their bone structure, their the the size of their eyes, the size of their mouth, the size of their nose, the color of their hair, all that stuff. She's really good. The texture, all that stuff. So somebody I wasn't even paying attention, but but she she somebody had brought in a gown that they didn't want anymore. And it's beaded in silver and gold and it and it had a pretty pattern on it and this whole thing. And um the the woman my my clothing guru her name's Jennifer Butler she's genius anyway she she said from across the room she said Karen I think you're the only one that would look good in this she goes do you need a gown like this and I was like I do <laughs> so I got it it fit me perfectly I just had to take it in a little bit on the the waist but otherwise it fit me perfectly and um, I got to wear a new gown and I got to um, be the MC, and then I was the MC two more times, and then I was invited to be the MC of another um, another award show. Also, it was um, oh, I'm forgetting oh, Intercontinental Music Awards show. So I did that last year, and that also has people from all walks of life, all parts of the world who are creating music who need to get involved in the music scene in a bigger way and this is a way to support their their dreams so it turned into this whole my vision turned into oh and then my friend in Hong Kong we reconnected as well and we we had some more fun because we always we did a move our first movie we did both of us I think it was our first movie and we just both called each other babe so, so he was like babe and I'm like babe and that's how we became friends because we were up in northern California for three months um, doing this movie with James Hong and um, my friend Michael Wong and me and I can't remember all the other people but it, it was called what was it called oh my god I don't remember the name of the movie I'll put it in the I'll put it in the show notes I have to look on my IMDB I've done I've done over a thousand hours of TV and film so sometimes I don't remember everything anyway um I, I thank you for listening to that story. To me, it's a sign of how powerful our imaginations can be and how beautiful this world can be if we use our imaginations for good. <laughs>